So while scrolling through the comments section of yesterday's video, Jake Nash asked if there was a first day in prison video. And realizing that there wasn't, I thought, what better time to do one than today? Now, I've mentioned before that when you leave jail to go to prison, how they wake you up at 3 o'clock in the morning telling you, Guerrero, pack your shit, and how you're escorted down to a holding cell to a weight transport to prison. But one thing that I've never mentioned is the fact that they dress you out before you are transported to prison. And what that means is they take you into a cell, strip you of all of your jail attire, your jail jumpsuit, whatever it may be that you're wearing inside of the jail, and then give back to you the same exact clothes that you were arrested in, the clothes that you came into the jail wearing. And in a lot of cases, you have not seen these clothes in a very long time. It could be months or even years. But again, they strip you of your jail attire and put you back in your street clothes. And it's the craziest thing in the world getting your actual clothes back, putting that clothes on that you haven't worn in however long, but knowing that the only reason they're giving you this clothes to wear is because they want to get you out of their jail clothing before they ship you off to prison. So after that, it's transportation time. Handcuffed, feet shackled, and hands shackled to your waist. You cannot go anywhere. And while sitting in that most uncomfortable position for most likely hours, your wrists are aching from these cuffs that are just cutting into your circulation, but you're not even really thinking about the discomfort and pain that you're in so much as you're thinking about the fact that, holy shit, I'm going to prison. What is this experience going to be like? I've never been to prison before. All I know of prison is what I've seen on TV. Stabbings, rape, extortion, beatings. I can't even lie to you saying that I wasn't because to be completely honest with you, I was pretty damn terrified. But that fear was something I could not show at all. I mean, I literally had had to have my game face on and at least appear like I've been here before. This is my fourth time going to prison. When we finally arrived at the prison after what seemed like about a three hour van ride, the van pulls around the front of the prison and then appears this gigantic dog kennel like cage with two gates on it and that is what's commonly referred to as the sally port. The first gate opens up, the van pulls in, that gate closes and now you are confined inside of this dog kennel cage where you are then escorted out of the van by these prison guards and the first thing they say to you as they're unshackling uncuffing, unlinking your feet is welcome to prison. Take off all your clothes. Right here? I mean, we are completely exposed inside of this dog kennel like cage and you take off all of your clothes. Oh my God, this, this is not gonna be fun. If you are not in discomfort up until that point, well, you can rest assured that you will be the moment they unshackle you and tell you to get naked in broad daylight in a dog kennel-like cage engulfed by a gigantic penitentiary basking in the background, yeah, you will be uncomfortable then. You're stripped and then redressed in a prison jumpsuit and from that point, you are escorted inside of the prison compound. You're led into a building that is considered the classification building. This is for new intake prisoners coming to the prison and there is a lot of shit that goes on inside of this building. The first thing that happens in, in the state of Virginia, I have to mention that because in different states it may be different things. But in the state of Virginia, the first thing that they do is they take that clothes that you were transported to prison in, your street attire, and they ask you, what do you want to do with this clothes? You have three options. You can throw it away, you can donate it to the Salvation Army, or you can mail it home. My clothes was not exactly the greatest clothes in the world, but I did decide to donate it to the Salvation Army. Maybe it would better suit somebody else out there in the free world, because it certainly wasn't doing me any good at this point. And from there, you are led into a room with only a a mirror, one chair, and a pair of hair clippers resting in that chair. And it is in this room where they are going to shave your head and also make you shave all of the facial hair off of your face except for your mustache. In the state of Virginia, the only facial hair you can have is a mustache. And it's here that if you fail to comply with this shaving process, 
you will immediately be sent to isolation to the hole and you will lose all of your good time immediately. I came out of that room looking pretty much exactly like what I was. A newbie, fresh meat, a guy who had never been to prison before and the look of fear was now even more evident on my face now that I didn't have much facial hair to hide it. From here, it's orientation time, where they tell you the rules of the prison, what you cannot do, not much anything of what you can do, tell you horror stories of violence that has transpired here at this prison to try to scare the life out of you. And also, it's here during this orientation time where they make you watch the movie. There is a movie that you have to watch immediately upon coming to prison. It is a sexual assault awareness video, and this is the most disturbing video you will ever see in your life. This video starts off with this guy right here basically telling you how he was raped almost every single day that he was in prison and just how all of that transpired. And from there, this video really does not get much better at all. If you would like to see this video for yourself, I will tell you how to do so at the end of this video. I promise you, this is a video that is quite disturbing and they make you watch this video immediately upon getting to prison to try to educate new arrivals at the prison um, about sexual assault awareness, I guess. This is actually real prisoners talking about experiences that they have had while in prison. After the scariest movie of my life was finally over, I was then told where I would be housed at and basically kicked right out the back door of the classification building. Bong! Welcome to prison. Go find your building. While trying to find my building, I can't help but to notice the rec yard that is right there in the middle of the prison compound. Gigantic chain link fences with barbed wire around them and then a secondary fence inside of that fence with barbed wire on top of that fence and also at the ground level of that fence as well. And it was during this moment as I'm seeing this rec yard for the first time and trying to find my building that I actually realized just how many fences there were that separated me from exactly where I was at that point to the absolute exterior of this prison compound. I mean, there were at least five fences that separated me from exactly where I was to outside of this prison. If I had any plans of escaping, there was no way I would be able to. When I got to my building and walked into the cell block, I'm not going to lie, I was pretty nervous. I had no idea what type of environment I was walking into. And as the gate opened and I first entered this housing unit, I tried to gather as much intel as I possibly could immediately upon entering that housing unit of just what this would be like as I walked from that front gate to my actual cell to put my stuff away. And it was during that short walk from that front gate to my actual cell that I realized just how fucking out of control this place was. It was so loud inside of this housing unit, it didn't seem like anybody even talked inside of here. They screamed at each other. And it's just all of this chaos that is completely surrounding me that is making the anxiety of this whole experience almost too much for me to handle. I literally felt like I was in a cold sweat walking to my cell. I could not get there fast enough because I did not want anybody to see, which I'm quite sure they did, the absolute look of panic that had to be completely visible on my face. I got to my cell, started putting my things away, and in walks my celly. Yo, what's up, man? Who are you? I'm Joe. Pleasure to meet you. They call me Killer. Killer, what a fine name that you have, sir. I can only imagine that you have been given this name because of the fact that you have killed someone. Hey, you're awesome. It wasn't long after I first walked into this housing unit that I heard something that I had no idea what it meant. A prison guard came to the front gate of the cell block and yelled, Gate break! Not date rape. Gate break. Gate break? What the, what the hell does that even mean? Gate break! And he then opened the front gate of the housing unit and prisoners started filing out through that gate. Me having no idea what gate break means, I decided to follow suit. And what I soon learned was that gate break meant it was time for rec. Every hour, they do a gate break during rec hours and that was your opportunity to either go to the rec yard or come back to the cell block. Okay, well at least I'm picking up on these things now. And it was during that first prison rec experience where I would meet the first person in prison that I would become cool with. I will never forget this guy for as long as I live. 
His name was Slick. He was from Tennessee, country as they come. Tall, skinny kid, taller than me, I'm 6'4", this kid was a giant. And it was during that first prison wreck as I was walking the track, there's a track inside of the wreck yard where it's like prisoners aimlessly walk this track almost looking like walkers from the walking dead. Basically walking going absolutely nowhere except in a circle. But it was during this time that I was walking this prison track where this guy came up to me and said hey there how you doing uh what's going on man i couldn't help but notice you was walking that track by yourself there and i reckon i would join you okay <laughs> where are you from where are you from <laughs> he was a cool guy and you know when people come up to you in a prison you would automatically assume if they're trying to get to know you they're trying to feel you out see how they could possibly take advantage of you see if you're weak see what sort of gang you're in but slick was just a tall lanky country kid I'm from Tennessee, I can tell. And I gotta be honest with you, Slick gave me a lot of good information when I first got to prison. I'll never forget how he told me, you know, when I first came to prison, guys were trying to warn me as I was leaving the jail, they said, Slick, when you get to prison, don't borrow nothing, don't do no gambling, and don't you go associating with none of them homosexuals. I said, Slick, man, that's some, that's some pretty good information them guys gave you before you left the jail. He said, you dang right, it was some good information. He said, but the problem is, I already owed the tobacco man $60. My cellmate's the biggest one of them homosexuals here on the compound, and I can't find a card game. Yeah, Slick told me that before leaving the jail, they warned him, do not do any gambling, don't borrow anything, and don't associate with any homosexuals at prison. And then he tells me that since getting to prison, he already owes the tobacco man, the guy who has the cigarettes in prison, he already owes this guy $60. His celly is the most notorious homosexual here on this compound and how he can't find a card game to do any gambling. This guy was having the time of his life here in prison. In fact, as we continued to walk around that prison track, Slick actually pointed out to me who his notorious homosexual cellmate actually was. There we go right there, that homosexual cellie of mine. What? Where? See that guy over there sitting next to that other guy on that picnic table? Yeah, the one right there with his hand making that jerking movement next to that other guy. I actually witnessed Slick Sully sitting out on a picnic table next to another prisoner with a shirt over top of the lap of the other prisoner while Slick Sully sat there jerking this guy off right there on the prison rec yard. We walked by this guy and he was like, we literally walked by this guy and it was like, hey Slick. That's your celly? When that wreck period ended, we were told wreck was over and basically told to go back to our cell blocks. And while going back to my cell block, I learned exactly what a blind spot in prison is. And basically what that is, is anywhere that a guard, a mirror, or a camera cannot see. And a perfect blind spot happens to be stairwells inside of the buildings where the cell blocks are. And it was in this stairwell that I literally had to walk right past the guy who was getting the shit stomped out of him in that stairwell. Let me just step right over this so I can get back to my cell block because I don't want any parts of this. My first day in prison was crazy. There was a lot of crazy things that I was feeling during that first day. Fear, nervousness, anxiety, a sense of panic, and I had to do the absolute best that I could to suppress those feelings and not let any of that show. My cellmate, the guy Killer, who undoubtedly killed somebody, he actually turned out to be a pretty all right guy. But I never could have known that on that very first day. And to get to prison for the very first time, to have to experience everything that you experience during that first initial period, and then to be housed in a cell with a guy named Killa, knowing absolutely nothing about him, trying to go to sleep that night basically didn't happen. I have no idea who this guy in the cell with me is. Therefore, I don't think I'm gonna be doing much sleeping tonight. But that's pretty much it for my first day in prison. It was absolutely hell. And I hope that's something that you never have to experience. Hey, look, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did so, please leave a like and a comment. Let me know exactly what you thought about it. 
And if you want to see the real deal prison rape video, all you have to do is Google prison rape video and it will be literally like the second thing that pops up called the candy bar movie. Go to that site there and click on the men's version of that video. I promise you, you will regret it. Until next time, enjoy life, the free world. Never take a moment for granted and make the most of every day. Peace. Let's give a bunch of shout outs from the Super Bowl Prison Nachos video. I forgot to do that yesterday. Nertsy Jenkins, Madison E, Joan Mima, Welzer, Moses Embury, Ricky Herrera, Hells I Am Random Man, and Alex C37. Special thanks to all of you and to everyone else. And until next time, peace.